Hello, hello everybody and welcome. Let me know where you're watching from. Uh, and let me know if you can hear me. Rumbi, can you hear me? Okay, what about Millie? Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so today we're doing a live uh, and then also I'm going to talk about green card lottery application uh, in the beginning. I'm going to talk about adjusting uh, to life in the United States and then that's where Rumbi comes in. And then we'll talk about hosting and that's where Millie comes in. So we'll have, uh, I know there's new people who've not met these people on the screen yet. My name is Nafula. If you've not subscribed, please, please subscribe. And also the other two have YouTube channels. They'll give you the link so that you can uh, subscribe. Thanks for your support. Thanks for everything. So we'll begin by them introducing themselves. So uh, let me start with uh, Rumbi. Yes. Introduce yes. yourself. <laughs> right. Hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome. My name is Rumbi Zai Rachel, and I'm originally from Zimbabwe, and I am a TV 2023 winner. Okay, welcome. So we'll bring you back, Rumbi. So stay there, okay? okay? All right. So we'll bring Millie. Millie, tell us about yourself as well. Hi everyone, uh, once again, my name is Millie Segal, uh, commonly known as Millie and Chris in our channel, and I'm happy to be here. So okay. I'm looking forward to have a good one today. Yeah, so she has exciting stuff about hosting. So if you if you applied for the green card lottery and you know you're gonna win because we're gonna win, right? So she's your hookup. So we'll talk about uh, hosting later in the channel. Right now, I'm just gonna go over some questions that people have been asking and then we'll bring them back. Okay, Emily, we'll see you in a few. Okay, so I'm gonna go over the questions that you know people have been asking about DV lottery. And usually, you know, maybe they made a mistake or stuff like that. So we'll cover that and then I'll bring the other two so that we can talk about how to adjust. We see if Rumbi still likes America or she doesn't care about it anymore. So we'll talk about that. So one of the questions um, that I've, God is like, okay, I applied as single and then uh, I'm planning on getting married. So if you applied as single and then you plan on getting married, what you can do, if you win, you can actually add your new spouse to your DS-260 because that's a huge change. So when you open your DS-260 and now you have a spouse, you have to add them to the DS-260 and that way both of you will get to immigrate to the United States together. So that's not a problem. The only time is a problem is if you are married before, like if you are married, um, maybe before you applied for the green card lottery. And then now you decide like, okay, now I have won the green card and I want to add this spouse that we were married before, but I did not add them to my application. If you do that, don't even show up at the embassy because you'll be denied. One, you lied in your application. You applied a single knowing very well you had a wife, you had a spouse. So make sure, like, you know, if you did not add anybody and you're married and you lied, just stick with the lie all the way to the end. So don't change that. Another important question that has come up is like, I have, I was pregnant when I applied. So, you know, you can't add a pregnancy. You don't know when you, this baby is going to be born, right? So if you applied when you are pregnant and you win, also, you can add this new baby to your DS-260 because it's a new development, you know. You were not married before. You added your new spouse. You did not have a baby before. You are the new baby. But if this baby existed before you applied, do not add them because that is automatic visa denial. Okay. So uh, some people are like, okay, so I omitted maybe my kid was in school, in college. Oh, they were doing something. I didn't have a picture of my kids. So I decided to just apply me and my wife or me and the kids. So if in case you win, then whoever was not included, unfortunately, that's it. You cannot add them to the DS-260 because they mess up everything. You lied. So if you did not add anything, and this is important that I'm insisting, like if you did not add anybody before, do not add them later because you will be denied a visa. Africans like to do that. And we are getting denied left, right, and center. So if you get married after the application, your marriage certificate should show that you married after the application, not before. So that's important right there. And then also some things like people are wondering what can be changed. So 
if like you applied with a wrong name, like, you know, not like a completely different name. So for example, like you put your middle name as the first name or your last name as a middle name, like you switch the order or maybe the spelling was wrong. Maybe you spell David and then you forget to put one letter in there. Or maybe your last name, you spelled like a different, you know, that you can change. When you win, you can change that in the DS260. But if you're completely changing the whole name, you might need a sworn affidavit of the name to actually say that this person here is the same person using these other names here. So that's important. Like, you know, with the names, DS260, if there's an order change or maybe you missed a letter, do not worry about it. You can change that. Same with the birthday. Some birthdays sometimes maybe instead of 77, you put 71, you know, something like that. So they'll ask you and then you're like, maybe there's a typo or whatever, but then you can correct your date of birth. I have somebody who actually was here and when they applied, they had the wrong date of birth there. They had like a different month, but then like they changed their DS to 60 and then they were able to get a visa. Education, also you can change. And when I say you can change, you don't go from like having a degree to not having a degree. So, you know, like with the DV lottery application, usually uh, on the application itself, it confuses people because it says high school, no degree, high school degree with degree. So that's a little confusing, especially for people in Africa, because in Africa, having a degree means you're going to college, like you went to college or university to get a degree. But then here, completing high school is equivalent to high school degree. So if you have 12 years of study, that's equivalent to a high school degree. So a lot of people complete the DF, I mean the DV lottery application and they say high school, no degree. Because they're like, it's high school, I finished high school, but I don't have the degree yet. But then that high school is the degree. So that you can change. So when you win on your DS260, you just make sure you just put high school degree and then you include the school where you went to, and then, you know, they'll check the grades depending on your country. I think Kenya is D minus or D, something like that, something very low. So as long as you finished high school, you should be good. And then I had a common question about somebody saying about like adding kids who are over 20 years old. The application, when you go to the website itself, like when you're applying, it says right there, do not add any kid who's 21 or over. And if the kid is 21 and 21 or over and married, you cannot even add those ones. So if you're adding a 30-year-old, a 40-year-old, what are you telling the system? That's how people get disqualified because now you're adding a 50-year-old when clearly they said you have to add somebody who's 20 years and younger because 21-year-old is considered an adult. And then, you know, some people are like, you know what, when you come here and then you did not add the adult kids, you will not be able to bring them here. That's not true. That's not true at all. Because the DV lottery application or the program, you can't immigrate with adults. You don't need to add them. But then when you're here and you're citizens, because they're your kids, they qualify if you have to petition for them to come immigrate as your family. So they come on a green card as a family, as much as you did not add them on the DV lottery application, you can still petition for them. So you don't get penalized because you didn't add them. So they're not saying like, oh, these are the only kids that you have. They say this, are, the application is like, these are the only kids that are below 20 years old that I added to this application. So let nobody tell you that because you didn't add a kid, when you come here, you can't petition. A lot of people did not add those kids when they applied for the DV lottery and the kids are here. You don't get penalized because the US understands like on the DV lottery application, you're not supposed to add anybody who is over 20 years old. So it's 20 and younger. Okay, and then uh, how do you check your winning? I've said that multiple times. You just go where you applied originally for the DV lottery, the website, just go to the website. And then that you need a confirmation number and you need uh, your last name and you need your year of birth. And then you'll be able to see uh, your results. So for example, if you lost maybe your email address, you don't need an email address unless you don't have a confirmation number. So if you have your confirmation number, you just use the confirmation number, your last name, and your year of birth. But then if you lost your confirmation number, 
that's when the email comes in. Then you put in your email to retrieve the confirmation number so that you can check. And if your email address doesn't work, but you have a confirmation number and you find out you won, this email address, it doesn't matter because you will use the confirmation number once you get your case number and whatever to get into the DS260. Once you're in the DS260, you will put a new email address. So you need that confirmation number. So if you have somebody said something about an email address, they lost it or whatever, don't worry about that. As long as you have the confirmation number, if you find out you win, when you process your DS260, then what you're going to do, you're going to go in there and it will change your email address. And to complete your DS260, you don't need your passport, but I encourage everybody to get the passport early. So you don't need a passport to complete the DS260. You can actually do it without a passport so that your case is, they start processing it. Like if your number is like a low case number, then it's better that you, you completed the DS260 early so that it gets processed and then you get your 2NL, you get scheduled, and then you can show up even with the passport at the embassy. So just make sure like if you're out there and you won the DV lottery, you don't have a passport because Kenya is crazy right now with passports, just make sure um, that you complete the DS260 whether you have a passport or not. A lot of people didn't complete on time, they didn't get an interview and somebody had like a low case number and she still doesn't have an interview just because she made a mistake of not completing it and waiting for the passport. We just came out last month. So they were late to submit uh, the DS260. And I'm just going to go real quick. Uh, let me see if I can pull here. Uh, let me put it as a full page. So uh, you can see on my screen right here, like if you won the DV lottery. So this is where you check, like, you know, after you check the results and then you submitted your DS260. So you keep on a track of visa bulletin because this will tell you like when you're, case is almost like being scheduled. So like you can just go to Google and go to visa bulletin for December because we're in December. Uh, and then you just, uh, hold on, yeah. So you just scroll all the way down. You can just scroll all the way down and then you get down here and then you can see what is the most current. So you see like this one here up here Africa, we are at 11,000. So uh, this one was like, you know, they'll be scheduled for December, depending on how your embassy is performing. So they are scheduled for December. I have somebody, uh, uh, a DV lottery winner from Uganda who was in the 3,000. He already has his visa and he'll be coming uh, next month. So he's a DV 2024 winner, but he already has his visa and he will come in. He'll be traveling on the same year. And then like, uh, I have two people here who I'll be hosting as well. Uh, the, the, for December, they are scheduled for January. Uh, so if they fall within the 20, uh, 22,000 range. So one is 16, the other one is 12. They receive the two NLs and they will be, they already scheduled uh, for the uh, interview at the embassy. So we have that. So that's where you check. And then I've, you realize like, I don't go into detail. I won't go into like telling you this is how Nairobi is performing. This is how Tanzania, uh, Bangladesh embassy, Indian embassy, whatever is performing. Because that information is important to know, but you can't do anything about it. Like even if you're an expert at knowing how all the embassies are performing, it doesn't mean that you're gonna get your 2NL quicker because you know that information. Your 2NL will come when it comes. So I feel like I can go into detail and tell you, okay, this is how the embassy is performing. This is how, how many cases are getting scheduled. It will help you. It just, just gives you anxiety. What I say, if you win the green card, there's two things. Either you will be scheduled for the interview or you will not. Knowing all that information is important just to make you feel smart, but like it really doesn't help. So like, unless you plan on changing your embassy, like if you plan on changing your embassy, to Tanzania from Kenya, you know? If you plan on changing your embassy based on how the embassy is performing, then probably you need to know how embassies are performing, how embassy in Egypt is performing. But other than that, like, why do you need that information? I feel like you will benefit more from like somebody showing you how to complete a DS260, how 
where to get the medical, you know, where to like, okay, where do I pay for the embassy fee in this country? That helps you more than checking the statistics. They're important. I, I don't, you know, I don't dispute that. They're important, but you don't need to know. You can actually channel that energy into learning how do I apply for a social security number if I get to the US? Which states are better with my career? You can check that. How much is this career? How much do they pay? Channel that energy to that. Knowing how many people applied for DV lottery in 2024 or 2023, it does not help you. Knowing that information won't make you win. You either win or you don't win. Either you know that information or you don't. So just keep in mind, like not all that information is actually important. So let's talk to Rumbi. Um, so Rumbi just got here um, just recently. So I just wanted her to come and tell us her progress because a lot of people want to know like, okay, how is Rumbi doing? She just got here. So the reason why, so on my channel is this, when you apply for hosting, so I like, I do videos to help people apply for the green card lottery, to settle in America, to go to school in America, to get jobs in America, to come on visitor's visa. I do all these videos to help you. The amount I'm getting on YouTube is not like, to be honest with you, is not paying any of my bills because that amount, if you're in Africa, probably it will help you with much. I'm not saying, but the amount I don't, I don't get paid enough on YouTube to actually be doing it for free. So I do it because I want to help people out, right? So when I host you, usually like if, if all the people I'm hosting, I'm hosting under the impression that you'll come here and share with your friends, with everybody else on my channel, they'll see your progress, like Rumbi will talk about it. So you see the progress and you learn from it. But if I host all these people and nobody's coming on this channel to tell you, this is how I made it, there's no way you will find out. So that's why it's important that you share your story. Maybe if you look at Joffrey's um, video, anybody from Uganda watching all of Joffrey's video, they won't have any questions about how to process their DV lottery winning. So that's why when you come to me, before I never used to ask, okay, are you able to share your information with everybody so they can learn? I didn't ask that because I assumed everybody will want to share, but not everybody wants to share. So that's why I added that question. So if you don't want to share your information, you don't want to tell people how you applied for the green card lottery, how you won the DV lottery, how you even process your visa, how was the embassy, what was the questions and all that. So if you do not want to do all that, I'm going to host you, but you will not come to New York to me because this is not what I do. You can go to other people. I have other people signed up for hosting. I'll send you somewhere else, but I won't host you because when you come for me to host you, one, you do not pay me anything. Like you can see like all the people I've hosted, you can, I know your friends on Instagram. Nobody's paying me to get them from the airport. Nobody's paying me to take them everywhere to get all this stuff. Nobody is paying me to get them a job. I'm doing it for free. In return, you have to share with other people. I'm selfless with you. You don't pay for it so that you can share with other people. But if you don't want to share with that, by manage, you know, like I want to, maybe I could have hosted you and, you know, you don't share and it doesn't matter. But I have a management behind me. And the reason why we share is for the credibility. If Rumbi was not here, Joffrey was not here, Elia didn't share, Juma didn't share. You guys will think I'm scamming people. If I say I'm hosting and you don't see anybody on my channel, like how would you know like actually I'm hosting? It be it will be so hard to prove that I'm hosting when you don't see actually the people that I hosted. So to be hosted by Nafula, if you're coming to New York in one of my properties, you have to share at least something to help another DV lottery winner. I'm a DV lottery winner. I'm sharing so that other people apply, other people win. So if you're not ready to share, I'll still host you. I won't say like I won't host you. I will host you, but it's not going to be with me in New York. I'll send you somewhere else where there's privacy. But here with us, 
we are sharing everything because we want to see how Rumbi is going to do, how she's going to get a job, how she's going to move out and start her own life. We'll support all that in return that she's going to share her story with everybody. So let me uh, bring Rumbi back. Hey, Rumbi. Hi. Okay, Rumbi. So I want you to tell us the story, like, you know, the rundown. Where are you at? I know you came here. I showed a video of everybody. I know you'll do a video of like how the processing of the DV lottery is, 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 is in Zimbabwe. But then for today, just tell us the progress so that we know like, okay, since you came, what is the timeline and what have you done so far? What, are, what documents have you received so far? So that at least everybody can see how you're doing. I'm gonna put you up here. Oh, all, right. all right, you can go ahead. All right, so the progress has been very, very good, very, very fast, actually, way much more faster than I actually anticipated when I left home. So I've been here for like three weeks now, two and a half weeks plus, yeah, almost three weeks now, but so far I've gotten like a lot already. Um, the week that I came, I went to apply for the um, social security. That's when we got the social security. So from Zimbabwe, they don't, Set, up, set it up from your country at the embassy, like what they do in other countries. So I have to apply for it from scratch when I come here. So when I came here, that's when we went to the social security office to apply for the social security number. We went on a Tuesday, yes, it was on a Tuesday. Then they will give you like a timeline that it will come within two weeks. But it ca actually came very, very earlier than that. It came the following Monday. So it was less than one week before it came almost like six, seven days. So it was less than one week, which was very, very fast. Wow, that was quick. That was very so, quick. Yeah, very efficient and fast. Yeah, the systems, they are completely different than what I was used to. <laughs> they are very really fast. Yeah, so my social security done is okay already. Now I have it. And then the second thing was the green card also. It also came, it just recently came the last week i think last week yes so now i also have my green card with me and that's just like three weeks after i came into the u.s so i am so 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 happy so you're lucky. <laughs> very lucky very very happy and lucky mm -hmm. so the trick is i think it's actually better they actually tell you from most embassies like the one in harare they recommend you to pay for the green card fee well, at least you're still at home so that once you come here yeah. at least within They'll tell you like within three months it will come, but for mine it came in like three, less than two weeks, two and a half weeks. Yeah. Wow, yeah. yeah. Yours was quicker actually. Oh, really? <laughs> Compared, <laughs> Compared to the other, yeah, DV lottery winners. Yours it was like, we applied and literally like within like less than a week, you had your card already. Yes, less than a week. Imagine less than a week that it came. I was also so shocked that it comes this fast. I was so, so shocked, mm -hmm. but everything has been moving like so, so, so fast. So that's the good part here. The systems here are very good, very efficient and reliable. Okay, so tell us about, um, so you got your social security number. Uh, yeah. So what about the jobs? Tell us about jobs. How long did it take you before you oh, even okay. heard from anything in regards to finding employment? Oh, okay. Even before I, that's the thing, even before I had like the social security number, I had already had like a lot of openings, like job openings that were there. So that's the thing. When you come here, jobs, they are not even difficult to find at all. So I had to wait for the social security number first. That's the one which I had to wait for. So after I waited for the social security number, I got the social security number and immediately I got a chance through, I got a chance through the recommendation, I got a chance to apply to a job and I did the interview that was also so good. It went so well. So now I'm just waiting for my start date. So, I'm yeah, already, so you already, and you told them you already got the job. You didn't just do the I interview. Got the job. Yes, yes the interview. Yes. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay. Now you're gonna be loaded. <laughs> yes, sorry, right. good as employed. Yes. Yeah. So okay. Uh so you got that, and then you got uh your green card. So did you really need your green card to get your social? To get the social. Did you didn't need the, the the card, the actual card to get a social and to get a job. Did you need the actual no, card? You don't really need the actual card to get the social security card. As long as you've got like your social, your passport with you because it has like a visa stamp. That one is good to use for like one year. Cause once you come in in the US by the CDP, they'll just stamp it. And once they stamp it, that one is as good as a green card by itself. So you just carry your passport with you. So no need to rush to have like the card itself. 
So the yeah. card, you don't really need it. Because a lot of people, you know, mm -hmm. they think like you need the actual card, the green card. Mm -hmm. The card itself to get a job and to get, no. So when you come okay. in, you have a visa on your passport. When you have a visa, if you if you look at that visa, there's a number there, an alien number. When you get your social, it's going to have the same number. So when you come in, that visa on your passport is your green card and is good for one year. So with one year, you don't need to apply for the other green card if you don't have money. You can start working and then pay for the other physical card to come. But other than that, you can actually use your, your passport to actually get jobs and just be like a permanent resident. That's your proof of permanent residency. So how do you like so far New York? How do you like? I know you don't like the weather, so <laughs> it's a little chilly. So. <laughs> I wouldn't really say I don't like it. I mean, it's new, I'm getting used to it, but so far it's been good. Because the thing is, for me, I came when it's winter was just starting. So, wow. You know. yeah. And you know, if somebody shows up here, I tell them right up front, I'm like, New York is very cold. Like in the winter, we have winters here. It's not like Texas. I'm like, if you want to be warm, you can go to Texas, go to Florida, go to California. Here, yes. there's so many opportunities. The pay is good. But then the weather in yeah. the winter is a little is a little iffy. But then, like, look at it this way: there's people mm -hmm. living here. You're not the first one. You're not the second one. You're not the third one. How? What is the population mm -hmm. of New York? And people, all these people experience winter, and they're they thriving. So, so you're not special to be like, okay, I'm gonna be cold and die because I'm cold, right? Because there's people living here, so it's a place that's survivable, right? Exactly. Very true. <laughs> And it's actually not as bad as you would actually think it would be because the thing is, even if it's winter, when you go outside, yes, it will be like cold, but if you have a jacket on, you'll definitely be good. But the mm -hmm. thing is, most of the times you'll be indoors either at home or at work or somewhere else inside. Yeah. So you're not even spend like most of the time like out in the cold. Like so in the cold. Like so you're not like you're walking to work or whatever. And then so how is your transportation? I know you you don't have a car yet. Yes. So how do you think, how are you going around, moving around? How can you, what is the transportation here like? All right. The transportation here in New York, uh, the good part is compared to other, uh, other cities and other states and stuff, at least the good part is here, there are buses around. So if you want to move around, you can always use like the public system is available. There are buses and there are also Ubers. If you can do the Uber, you can also use the Uber. And also, as you grow, as you live for a longer time, you get connected to people. They can also help you and take you around until you yeah. are stable enough. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you won't be like in this place is not like in a position where like you can't go to work because you don't have to move. Yeah. 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 Which is good that with the buses, especially because, you know, people go to in different states and then like there's a state where there's no public transportation. So how do you get to work? You know? So the good thing about here, you know, you can go to work, use a bus. It's going to take longer. But then, like, you work on saving money and getting a car. That's why I'm pushing the other guys. I'm like, you need to work, get a car. Because sometimes you get a good job, but then you're limited because of transportation. Maybe it's too far. Uber is going to be too expensive. So that's why, like, you work, save money. I encourage somebody, come here when you know how to drive. So that when you finish, you can take your tests, get a car, and start driving yourself around. That way, if you want to work four jobs, you can do that. <laughs> All right. Anything else you want to tell us? Uh, that's just about it. Unless if someone has a question, yeah. Uh, let me see if anybody has a question. Uh, let's see this one. Uh, I'd like to know about American SIM card. What does it mean to avoid being put in a host plan? Because it's very expensive. What does it mean? Um, so Rumbi, you have a phone, so you can answer this question, right? So how did you get a phone? <laughs> oh, okay. For me, I got lucky because I already had a phone that was unlocked. So when I came here, it worked. Mm -hmm. I just had to buy like the SIM card. But if you're coming directly straight from home in Africa, most of the phone I advise you, like when you're about to leave, don't buy a new phone saying I'm now going to America, so I need to upgrade my phone so that, you know, when I get there, I'll be having like a good up-to-date phone. Just don't try and do that. It's better to save money than you come here, then you buy like a phone and the SIM card. Because most of the phones that are blocked back at home in Africa, they will not work when you come here in the U.S. 
most okay. of them, almost all, all of them will not work. So it's better to just save money. Then when you come here, you can just buy a phone from here, then the SIM card. And they're actually reasonable plans. If you're just starting out, it's just better to find like a reasonable plan from a career service. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. mine is like 30 something dollars per month, which is yeah, unlimited. So that's not, that's unlimited not too bad text. at all. Exactly. Unlimited call, unlimited text, and with data also. Which yeah. Is managed. So you don't have to be locked like this one is like a host plan so like i have a plan i don't want to put room in there because it's going to be very expensive she starts starting she, she's just starting life right i'm a vlogger so i need like a lot of data so i need the best plan that i can get out there right but ruby doesn't need that because either she's at work and she's not using her phone or she's at home where there's wi-fi and if you go to the supermarkets here grocery stores you go out there there's free wi-fi so you don't need, really need like a lot of data if you're not going to use it for something else, like to go live when you're outside, something like that. So she came with the phone. We went to the AT&T and then they had a monthly plan. So the monthly plan, you just pay like $30 a month and then you get service for the month. And then the next month you pay and then you get service. If you don't pay, then they cut your phone off. They shut it off for like two months and then you lose the number. So that gives her like an option of like if she does not like that plan she can change to something else but if i lock her into like a, a contract a yearly contract then as much as she doesn't like the plan she does not have the option of like backing out of it you are stuck with it but then whatever she has right now and whatever all the boys have is just a monthly plan and then when they get bougie rich enough they want to buy iphone 15s and get the good plan then they'll do that but now that they're starting life we are prioritizing like, okay, do you need a phone or do you need a car to go to work? Do you need food or do you need iPhone 15? You know, so you just have to prioritize uh, what you need at this time. So let me see. I think that's the. Uh, so uh, she says uh, something about opening a bank account and creating a credit score and health insurance. So she doesn't know that at this time. So she has a bank account. So she was able to open a bank account. How did you open that? Wow. <laughs> and got so, so lucky. That's the thing. I was used to the system where you have to go like physically mm -hmm. to the bank, wait in the queue, then you open an account, they'll tell you, wait, we'll process. Then weeks later, they'll say they'll approve it. But when I came here, my host, they actually told me that that's not how it goes here. So you just open it even from your mobile phone, like an application, then you can do it online open the mobile and then you just upload. upload how did you upload the documents there's a place you can upload on the on the mm -hmm. app yes they'll ask you like to scan like a copy of your id and because i didn't have the green card yet that time you just scan the copy of your passport they'll still take that one so mm -hmm. you just scan your passport then they'll approve you and within it will take actually like two days for them to open the account after two days they will approve it and then after some time they'll give you like i think it is like less than one week they'll send you the physical bank card, the debit mm -hmm. card itself. They that way, when you go to work, you can That's give that account, account number so your check goes directly to that bank account. Yes, exactly. Yes. And then so that's account. just for the start. So now she has a bank just for the start. It's a, good, it's a good bank. But then after a while, then we'll get her to open an account with the credit union because they have better rates. They have, like if she wants to build the credit the way... Uh, Amos is talking about. So she's going to open this credit union account. And then with the credit union, she's going to have her paycheck go there every single month. And then after a while, she will apply for a credit card. And with the credit union, they don't have a yearly. If you haven't watched my video on credit card and building credit, you can go. I think I uploaded like it's two videos down. So it's about credit. So this credit card does not have a yearly payment. So like if you literally have the card and you put it under your bed, you don't have to pay anything per year. But most of the credits that they sell you out there, the credit cards, they have a yearly payment. Whether you use it or not, you have to pay either $75, $100, $150 um, uh, a year. So they have like to have the card, they're charging you $150 a year. But then if you go to a credit card, you get this... Um, uh, you go to a credit union, you get a credit card from them, you start using the credit card. So Rumbi will go to a grocery store, I'm like, you need to swipe your card. She goes to buy the iPhone 15, I'm like, you need to use your credit card. 
Because one thing that's important that you should learn anywhere, somebody told me this when I landed in America and it's been very helpful for me. When you go to buy stuff, never use your debit card. Do not use your debit card ever. Because if somebody steals that credit card and goes and swipes, guess whose money they're using? They're using your money, right? So if somebody's using your money, who cares about who uses your money? Nobody's interested in that. Whether you lose it or not, nobody cares. But look at a credit card. You have a card that you're using. This is somebody else's money. It's not yours. So if somebody gets your credit card and go on a swiping spree and buys everything, you call your credit card company, you're like, guess what? Somebody stole my credit card and they're using and it was not me. Because it was not your money, it was their money, they will go after that person because they want to get their money back. With a debit card, is your own money. So you have to go after the money to find where your money went. Credit card, you're using somebody else's money. So if you lose it, it was not your money to begin with. So somebody whose that money belongs to, they need to go after that. So that's why I encourage you to use a credit card because it builds your credit. So use a credit card and when, like after a week, when the, uh, you know, the statement posts, go ahead and pay that credit card. Every time you pay it on time and don't do the minimum payment, especially if you're coming from, um, from Africa and you're just a new immigrant, don't pay the minimum payment, go and pay the whole amount so that you're using the card. So you're using like maybe 400, you're using a thousand a month, but every statement, your bill is zero. So this shows that this is somebody who takes debt and pays back. And that's how you build your credit. But if you use the credit card and you do not pay back, then guess what? That's how your credit starts dropping. And if you go to buy a car like Rumbi and the other boys, once they follow this and they start using the credit card, they build the credit. Once they have a new job, a good job, now they are, you know, they're starting the pay is really good. I'm surprised. But once they get like a job that pays really well, because now, you know, they're just building a work history and stuff, then they can go to Toyota. They can go to whatever company. They can go to Subaru or whatever. And then they'll say, okay, I need this car. And then she'll, they'll be able to sign papers because of their credit and drive off with a new car without paying a single dollar down. And then when you drive off with the car, you start making a payment every month. Versus saving all this money to buy a car, just build your credit so that you can drive off with a car. And then with this car, like I say, is somebody else's car is not yours, right? So that way, every month, make sure you're making a payment on time. Then if you pay your car off, you'll just go to the same place, the bank, and you're like, hey, I'm here again. I need to buy a house right? They'll be like, oh, so you paid your credit card, you drove off with the car and you paid this car off. So you are a good, you pay your debts, so they will approve you for a house. But if you slack and you come here and people just get you like, you want to live the YOLO life, YOLO, you know, and then you get into all this debt and you don't want to pay back, then you end up with people who've been here 30 years and they still can't afford to buy a house. It's situations like that. Just live according to your means, you know? Ugali is good. I eat ugali cabbage. If I can't afford to eat like a steak, ugali cabbage, you're good. You're eating it back home. Don't get into that. Trying to have like, you know what, I'm going to have like a good steak or whatever like that. So thank you so much, Rumbi, unless you want to say something else. You are welcome. <laughs> Anything else you want to tell? Um, no, not really. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm, I'm turning you into a content creator. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I told her today I have a ring light. I'm like, don't give me turn this ring you. light on. <laughs> so she has she opened a channel. So she's gonna be sharing whatever she learns here if she wants to share. She has a channel. So I, I think on this link, I'm gonna put her channel link over there. So if you wanna follow her, support her, whatever. This is like your younger sister, so you gotta support her. So she can start a business like I did, right? Through me. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for being here. All right, thank you for having me. Okay. All right. So um 
So I'm going to talk before I invite Millie, I'm going to talk really quick about, I know a lot of people have a question about how Rumbi got to where she is. She arrived in the US. I picked her from the airport. I'm a stranger. As you can see proof, I did not kill her. So she's still alive. So you're safe being here, right? So after she arrived here, like a couple of days later, we went and applied for a social security card. And she needed, uh, you know, if you have your birth certificate from home and you have your passport, that's all you need. You go to the social security office. You say some, some states you have to book an appointment, but here you don't. You just walk in. That's what we did. The problem with walking in, we sat there for an hour and a half. But then we applied for the social security card like less than a week. She got the social security card. With a social security card and her passport, we were able to talk to an employer because here, like I have connections with a lot of employers. Like here I have supervisors, managers, I just call them directly. And I'm like, I have this person, she's looking for a job, she's a nice person, and I can be even a reference for them. And so she applied for the job, she went for the interview, and then she got hired, and then she's gonna start working next week. And then after that, so we'll apply for the state ID. The reason why I apply for state ID for them so that somebody doesn't work with the passport because that's the only ID you have. So if you lose your passport with your green card in there and you don't have the physical card, then it's going to be a problem. So usually I apply for a state New York state ID. It doesn't have to be the learner's permit. You can just go there and get a straight ID. And to, to do that, you need proof of address. So proof of address, I know when she applied for the social security card, the address on the social security card is where I live, right? But she cannot use the social security card or her green card for the proof of address as much as the address is on the social security card. And why is that? Because is a federal, they just send whatever, the Department of State, they just send them to whatever address, whether you live there or not, as long as you put the address somewhere, they send it there. So you don't have to be living there. But to apply for a state ID, you have to prove you live at that address. So what I did, I just went to the post office and I sent Rumbi a letter, I sent the other guys a letter. So that letter, it goes through the post office and then it gets, it post, they post stamp it. So that stamp shows that if you receive this, this is when it was received. This is what, so there's a date there. So this shows that this person lives there. Otherwise, if they didn't live at that address, they wouldn't be able to get this letter. So you just send them like, I'm just telling this for people who are hosting out there so that they can know the process. So you just send like a letter and then you can just put a blank paper in there. You don't need to put even anything. You just put like a blank little paper. You don't need to write anything so that the, the mail goes to them. When they get this mail, do not even open it. Just leave it as is because there's nothing in there as sealed. So take that as a proof of address, take the social security card and then take the passport. And then when you go there, they'll be able to apply for a state ID. Out of all those people who came, Geoffrey is an, is an engineer, so she, he's a little bit smart. So he went and took the test, a driving test, and he passed on the first try. So what Geoffrey needs is a car. So now he's working hard to get a car. So, you know, we'll teach him how to drive so that he can get a car. So he has his own car, drive to work, get a driving test again, and then he can use his car to drive. So that's pretty much it. So that's pretty much what you need to settle here. So if you have a host over there who's hosting you and they're not doing anything for you, at least now you have a rundown. So go tell them, hey, I don't have this social, can you please help me? I don't have a state ID, can you please help me? This information is important. Some hosts over there, they're really bad. I don't know why people are bad. You get a host, they put you in your house like a gunia. You're just sitting there, they're not finding you jobs, they're not finding you IDs, they're just giving you food and that's it. And I feel like if you do that, it's, like, it's stressful because now you have to feed these people, they don't have a job, you have to provide for them. If you empower them and help them once they get here to start working, then guess what? As a host, you do not have to like having them depend on you. They can be self-sufficient. They can earn their own money. They can contribute to the household. So please empower these people.
I get calls from people who wanna come here, on a fuller come, I, please host me because my host is this, my host is that. I don't host people who are already in America for the most part. I host people from Africa to come here. You can't go somewhere else and then come here is a problem. Only I do that for few exceptional cases. Otherwise I get people directly from Africa. Here, if you don't like your host, get a job and get out. And then now that you're talking about hosting, I host only single people. Like if you're a single applicant, you know, no husband, no wife, you're just single, no kids, I'll host you. Because like, you know, I'm putting like, everybody has their own room. So for Nafula hosting, there's no bank beds. There's no two people in the same room. I'm like, how do you get adults? These are people who are adults. They were adults back in Africa. Somebody is putting three people in a room, two people in a room. Where is the shame? Because this is an adult. You need privacy. If you have to dress, you need like your own privacy. You want maybe to call Africa, you need your privacy to be on your phone. When you're sleeping, maybe you snore. What to ngorota, right? You want a ngorota in peace. You don't have two people listening to you ngorota. They can't sleep. You know, that's why you have everybody. They have their own room. So if you are hosted on a fuller connect at any of my locations, you're going to have your own private room. So it's not going to be anything shared. So I host single people, but I do, not host, I do not host families, like if you have kids and whatever. So this is how, or this is why the, or how the next guest is going to come into the mix. Because, you know, in my program, I advertise, I'm like, if you need hosting, apply. And I'm getting a lot of families apply and I cannot host them. But as much as I cannot host them, I've been working undercover to make sure, like, you know what, at least you guys get somewhere you can go. Like if you win and you have a family, right? So I advertise on my channel. I'm like, if you want to host somebody, please contact Nafula on my email or whatever. If you want to host, if you're in America. And that's how this next guest found me. So let's bring her here. Let me try. Hey there. Hey. Okay. So this is Millie. So let's begin. How did you find me? Let's start there. Um, through YouTube. Randomly, I was just doing my normal, just watching videos and all that. So that's how I got to know you. Because I think one of your videos, I you know, in my channel, I do a lot of houses and all that. So there's a video you did about buying a house through through YouTube or something. Yep, so I yep. think YouTube arithmetic must have bring you in because it was talking about you buying a house. Okay. And most of my content is about houses and all mm -hmm. that. I think that's how they ended up bringing you into my uh, suggestion kind of thing. Because mm -hmm. I watch a lot of houses and all that. So when I saw that and I was like, Nafula sounds like a Kenyan name, also <laughs> a Luyan name. Village name, right? And I was like, wait a minute, let me see this one who bought a house through Facebook. I think that's what attracted me, how you entitled, the title of your content, something like that. And then it was all about houses and my interest is in houses. Mostly I love houses. I think. I love houses too. I'll yeah, buy a I house do. before I buy a car. <laughs> yeah, anything with houses, I go in full box. I'm crazy about houses too as well. But that's how you were suggested to all that I watch. And I was like, the Nafula name and all that must be Kenyan. And she bought a house. I think there was a title. If you remember that video, it was something you bought. Yeah, a I did a while ago. Maybe I might post for the new people to yeah. watch it. But I did, I did it a while ago. And I bought a house in New York because, like I see, you heard my story about, like, I was in a Kenyan group of women. Kenyan women group in America or something like that. And I posted about people helping uh, host people. And for some reason I was kicked out of the group because I posted about having people sign up to host other people. And I felt so bad. I'm like, why will somebody do that? I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna buy a whole house. So I bought house and that's not the only house I have. I have a couple others. So all these dipping up the winners, who are gonna win or whatever, don't worry about that because getting depending on a second party to get hosting, you get disappointed because I had people signing up and I don't have people like I don't I don't have a place to host them. Right. I'm like, why not? I'll just get my own house and host these people in peace so I can control. I'll be like one person per room. Maybe if they hosted them, they'd be like, we need three people per room. 
But then now, because it's my property, I get to choose what I do, right? So yep. it was a blessing in disguise. I thank them for kicking me out of the group because they've propelled me to get to where I am right now. So yep. what inspired you to want to host? I think after I watched that video and I went all the way to how you were going and showing and talking why you did that, I reached a place where you've already explained how there was a group of Kenyan people who you were trying to help because you're trying to make our own very people transition well here in America. Mm -hmm. And there comes a group of people who are just not for it and they were coming for you so hard. They had <laughs> to kind of, I think mm -hmm. you said they even removed you from the group and all that. Yeah, so. they removed me from the group. And then like I had, you know, when I started uh, my YouTube channel, I started like last year, I've, been, I've not been around for a while. So yeah. I started last year, maybe in September, when the mm -hmm. green card lottery was starting. And I'm like, you know what? Everybody I talked to back home, they're like, oh, how do you apply for the green card? How do you apply? And yeah. I have my friends apply and they won. And I'm like, why don't I share this information with everybody? So I uploaded a video of saying, you know what? This is how you apply for the green card lottery. And I was surprised, like, even my Kenyan people were coming for me. Stop lying to people whatever green card i'm like they know it says green card lottery they know it's luck right but they yeah. want to get all this information and i didn't give up and you know the good thing about me like if you attack me i attack you back like i <laughs> i don't care about reputation you know reputation okay. will figure out later so i attack them back and they stop so when right. they stop mm -hmm. then look at where we are we have all these houses and we have you i get a chance yeah. to meet you Congratulations. And you're yeah so mm -hmm. where are you gonna be hosting what city and just tell us a little bit about the hosting like where are you going to be doing that so after let me just go with uh, after after i got to know what you're doing i had no idea what this hosting is all about because mm -hmm. i had to now listen to you more to understand it because the type of visa that i came with is a very different kind of a visa and i had to now try to dig in and find how does this hosting come about is it mm -hmm. anybody or what? So I got to know that you're hosting uh, specifically the DV lottery winners and uh, all that. So after listening and checking so much about how it goes, I kind of, I think the very video, the very video that I watched from you is everything because that's how I got that strong will, that strong will to help because I was like, wait a minute. I think my sister here, she's trying to help our very own people and some of our people here in the US are trying to come for her. So that's kind of got my attention. And I was like, I'm not that kind of a person. I'm gonna help her or I'm gonna join her or I'm gonna do whatever to just do this with her because all she was asking is for people who can host. And uh, they so care for her. That. It really means yeah. a lot. I know you don't get paid, we'll get paid in heaven. <laughs> Yeah. But then for right now, now that we're on earth, do whatever you can. And I'm so I'm so thankful that mm -hmm. you actually watched that and decided to be a host. Because yeah, I cannot you host did parties, that. you know? You did that. I can yeah. tell you that. So, because of what you went through, mm -hmm. if you didn't go through that, then I could not even have bothered. I could have just yeah. watched it like any other video. But God intended for you to go through that so that I can see it. And I'm not just saying, because I've, I've watched many other videos, but my question was, why this one is it getting me that strong will to come in? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wait, I mean, I'm not sure even, I don't know what this hosting is all about. What is it? She's trying to help our people. I know, I know when you reached out on me on Instagram, yeah. and you know, I have a lot of messages on Instagram. Yeah. So like literally either my assistant is doing them, but sometimes, you know, when I'm just, I'm, I have two accounts, I have to check. So I saw you and I'm like, who is this? But then I'm like, let me respond. And then we we you call we me and then we yeah. connected and then we are on the right. same page yeah. i'm like okay she wants to help i know and people are like oh you have these houses you're making money out of dv lottery winners or whatever i'm a airbnb host like i'm a certified airbnb host for like four years so i can easily put all this room on airbnb and yeah. make twice More the money. amount of money yeah so i'm yeah. not doing this because like i can't get anybody to stay in there Actually, the other houses that are empty, Airbnbers are living there. But if I get a DV lottery winner who needs hosting, I'll kick those people out and then I'll put a DV lottery winner because now you're changing a life. It's not, you know, sometimes it's not all about money. True. So that's what I'm saying, True. like, as much as I can't host like people with families with kids, I feel bad. And that's where you come in because you can host for families, right? 
Uh, not really families, because you see, I'm still very new in this and I'm trying, you're kind of, I'm asking you a million questions and you're there yeah. to kind of give me an idea. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I grabbed this idea, I was like, okay, the much I can do as a family, because you told me you're going for singles. I wanted to do singles, but I was like, you're already doing it. So mm -hmm. I can take couples, but mm -hmm. not with kids. Not with kids. What about couples with like a kid who's like, not a kid, like 12 year old who can be alone in the house? Yeah, because that's my issue there. You see, America is different for my yeah. people back home. Mm -hmm. When it comes to kids, it's a whole ball game. And I, I don't have to take those responsibilities. Especially when they get hurt in your house. That's why I don't host yeah. people with kids. They get hurt. They it's get a hurt, whole ball game. Sick, you know? And, you know, to get insurance in America, you have to be working. So you get employers, insurance. Because as yeah. DV lottery winners, you don't qualify for Medicaid. I don't know why people just say stuff like you don't qualify for Medicaid under the DV lottery winning is different unless you're 55 or over or something. You have medical issues and it's an emergency and you go to the ED, they'll pay for it. Otherwise, you'll get a bill. So you have to work. So if you come with a family, just understand you have to get a job. Once you get this job, this job will have insurance. That's why I get all the DV lottery winners a job with benefits. So they have health insurance in case they need to go to the hospital. They have like, they'll go just with a card and they'll be like, okay, we'll see you. So that's important that you have health insurance, especially with kids. That's why I don't host them. And I, com I completely understand where you're coming from. Like even if you can just host a couple and then they come here, they get a job and they bring their kids if they want to bring exactly. their kids. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking. Cause I'm like, I know as much we love babies, but America is so different when it comes to kids. If you come from Africa, it's so hard to understand. You'd be like, why don't you like kids? It's not about liking kids. It's like just, it's mm -hmm. different here. So yeah. just to make you transition well, you can look for a way. If you really need it, you can just look for a way and bring them over like my sister has already said it. That's what, that's what I was going to say. So I can take couples. I can take okay. a couple. Couples, but no kids, right? They can bring the kids later. For now, yes. Until God gives me more ways out. For now, because I'm still new in this, yes, I will say yes to that. And then, uh, Until... just to clarify, you have apartments where they'll stay in their own apartments. So yeah. it's not like they'll be like in a room with 20 different people, correct? So uh, what I'm saying, okay, those are different. They're apartments, but they're kind of different. There's that one which, depending... Mm -hmm. um, Cause it's, it's, you know, um, you know, we are still in this, like we've not mm -hmm. put our two feet in. We are as new as you can know. Mm -hmm. So if it's a couple and it's most of my apartments are two bedroom houses, like yeah. two bedroom apartments. Sorry. Did I say houses? Two bedroom. Mm -hmm. So if it's a couple and they're two bedroom, they, they will have a common bathroom, a common, mm -hmm. not a common bathroom, a common kitchen and a common uh, living room, a common mm -hmm. laundry. But they have diff two. One bedroom is for this couple, and another bedroom is for this. Yeah, couple. that's that's okay. That's completely that's fine. How I, I want to. Like, they have their own privacy, but then they can yeah. share, like a yeah. kitchen or whatever. That's completely fine. That's, that's how I do. Yeah. So because mm -hmm. if they rent the whole apartment, they wouldn't be able to afford it. And you know, yeah. I try to make it so that it's affordable for everybody. So if yeah. you have somebody with two bedroom house, if you're coming from Africa, definitely they cannot afford that, which is good. Let them share. That way they're splitting the cost. Yep. So that way you're still getting whatever you're getting in the apartment, mm -hmm. but you're still helping them. And then how are the job opportunities over there? Oh, it's so easy. Like like Rumbi, by the way, Rumbi, if she's still listening, congratulations. She, you've already had it from her. Jobs here is not even something to... It's not It's not something that uh, if if it's Africa, but I know many people, are, well, uh, they win this from all over the world. But mm -hmm. if you come from Africa, you know job is just a big thing. But here, it's just so easy, especially, it doesn't matter the state, but in my state here where I am, I mean, Iowa, it's it's an easy thing. In fact, when they know you come from uh, Africa and all these other countries, mm -hmm. like if you are coming from, what do we call it, Mexicans, Spanish. And I know you're people, hardworking because you're they here. They know you're hardworking. Because they, know, stuff, they right? want you. <laughs> But we still have very strong job ethics. I'm not saying Americans don't. Please, my American people, don't come for me. I'm just yeah. saying that mm -hmm. it's, it's something that you will not struggle, honey. When you're here, job is so easy. Once you have everything, mm -hmm. we will get you going. Like, and I'm you not... help them like resettle, like get their social, get their ID, 
get a job, you'll help them through the process. And right? that's what God wants me to do because you see at the end of the day, it's not about just that. If I change my whole mind, if God just changed my whole mindset, it's about helping these people transition well without a struggle. I've mm -hmm. heard you say that, yes, they can live with relative and relatives, just feed them, but they don't tell them what they're right. needing to do. Mm -hmm. So my intention here was to make their transition comfortable and fast. Like you yeah. said, they have a dream to come America. Why keep them in your house for three months with no with no progress at all? So my intention was just to make them know what to do once they land here, once they have settled in, like what you need to do, where you go, like a job and everything. Of course, I'm learning from you. I've not done it. So mm -hmm. I'm learning from you. How you do it is what I'm going to borrow that uh, uh, kind yeah, of... Yeah, you, you'll do it as long as you yeah. need to get me. Oh, excuse me if you are ready to help people that's that's because it i know i've been helped to where i am i wouldn't be here without anybody's you know i didn't do yeah. it on my own i'm not team solo like i had people help me so if you want to get my attention just tell me you're going to help somebody i'm in a hundred percent and that's what you stand for that's why yeah. i was like yeah she she talks about stuff that i i stand for and i know like you're doing it out of a clean heart you're not doing it out of like oh bring those people we, we stack them eight people in a room like potatoes because you want to make money. That's yeah. selfishness. Like, don't stack adults. Everybody who won the green card lottery, at least from Africa, they're 18 or over. Don't put adults in like, why? You, it's like you're living in a slam in America. That's unacceptable, you know? So yeah. here you're not going to share a room. That's one thing. If you want to be part of hosting, a fuller hosting, not two people in a room. A room has to have somebody. I mean, one person, it has to have a closet. They have to have their own TV, you know, they have to have their own privacy. They can share a bathroom. That's fine. We shared bathrooms back home. We're fine. But for a room, unless you are married, two of you are married, there's no sharing a room. True. So what and else can you say? So you said you're in Iowa, right? Yeah. And before you go there, Nafula, just to make this a kind of something that I, I can, you know, that's where my heart is still heavy of who you are and what you've done. And I've, I've heard you saying uh, something there that is making a lot of sense. Many people don't understand, they think it's business. It's not business. Mm -hmm. You can have people come here with their money, pay whatever they want, and they get stuck and they get frustrated and they go back home after one year. And what you're doing and what made me people who are doing, they have helped people to embrace the change, fit it into the culture and end up loving America and they're here to achieve their dreams. Yeah. Exactly. So people can come here and they were doing well back home, but they come here with all the money and it just goes back to zero because nobody was there. Nobody exactly. was there to make them see this reality. A reality. So I'm just kind of trying to pump in. If you're listening to this, whoever is listening to this, no, it's it's with a clean heart. Yeah. Nafula Shalim, still we haven't met face to face. But the heart she has and what I've gotten from her, because I'm that kind of a person, is out to help. If anybody want to say that it's business, we are sorry, we are not the type of people to do that. We can go and do it the other way if we want to. Yes. But she has already said it. It's, it's out to make sure our people, not just our people, anybody who deserves this. And if you know you're okay and you have your way out, okay, don't reach out. But if you know that you really need this, come, come. That's why God has given us this. And it's all for the glory of God. So we are doing this because God has put it in our heart to kind of help our people fit in and just embrace America because it's not easy to start. You can think you're okay until you land here and you're like, okay, what did they say about America? You know, and you get yeah. all thrown off. So that is what I wanted to say today above everything. Transition is not easy. Starting a life is not easy. As much as you might think you're prepared, it is not. You, you are not prepared enough to start until you have somebody who can hold you and show you, hey, this is where you're doing this. This is how we do this. And this is how you can fit in. And, uh, and that's what I've gotten from watching her, from watching her channel. And you can see those short clips of two minutes, three minutes of her just smiling, making those. Hey, let me tell you something. When I saw the smile of these people, I watched those two minutes, three minutes clips, and you see those people smiling. That is everything. Yep. yep. That That's what we everything. want. That's what we want. That is everything. The joy that they get is genuine because they found somebody who is holding them up. 
You can come here with a thousand dollars. You can come here with ten thousand dollars, but you can be so stranded until you take a flight back home. Exactly. But if you exactly. have somebody, yes. But if you have somebody who, with those, uh, with that fifty dollar or hundred dollar, but you have somebody who is there telling you this is the grocery, save this. Let me tell you something. I'm sorry to go in. Let me tell you something. You, met, you immediately I met you and did that video where I I just brought you in without telling you. I shared it into the Iowa group. Mm -hmm. and the one that I said, uh, it's a good thing to host. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many stories I've had of people who are already here and how they struggle to get where they are? Yeah, it's sad. Um, it's sad. So many sad stories, so many sad stories. And that's why I'm like, God bless her. God bless her. God bless her. And yeah, I pray for you. That's why we do this, because other people are yes. doing it, and there are people who are there for money. I'm telling you. Yeah, people it's are true. Hosting it's for true money. like strictly they don't care about your feelings they don't, care. they don't care about what you need they don't care us like when the developers people the ones who are living at the locations they are together as family if somebody needs something go get it and a lot of people arrive in the u.s you can't imagine how many people arrive in the u.s and they go in depression a lot people yeah. are on medication here and why is that because here it's not like we don't live a communal life like you don't know who your neighbor is so if you're living in a house and nobody's talking to you, you don't have the social interaction. And that's an important part, especially if you're from Africa. If somebody takes you and puts you in a house by yourself, I and you don't you have there. anybody, depression is going to hit you. I'm going to... Like, very gonna fast. Very fast. Because it's a lonely country. Here, very. the mental health in this country, people are just like stressed. They're walking around stressed. They've been working three different jobs, four different jobs. They're tired and stressed. So just when you come home and you see maybe Joffrey across the room, you're like, hey, Joffrey, how was work today? Just that little interaction makes a huge, huge difference that people don't, you can come with your money, like you can have money and rent your whole apartment and furnish it. But if you don't have people there in this America, the way this cold, at this time it's freezing. Oh man. It's not freezing yet, but it's gonna freeze. And then you're there alone in the house, my friend, you'll start seeing things. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why like you know the social interaction is important so when they you know they come to you or they come to me at least i'm like somebody a contact yes and, and they know there's somebody I can... yeah exactly and the mind the idea just knowing in case of anything there's that piece of mind of knowing i have this person who no matter what i can run to anytime and she's there yeah. so that peace of mind already is hope it's giving them hope mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. they have that hope to know that i'm gonna make it in this country and that alone is everything depression will not even kick in like no, i'm gonna make it if I'm to, stuck, family here. yeah and if i'm stuck i have nafula i'm gonna call if i'm stuck mm -hmm. i have Millie, i'm gonna call so that That's gives true. them hope to go on and do more you know so mm -hmm. i've had so many stories and just bumping to you and getting to open my mind is all I wanted to say today. If 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 nothing else, guys, if you're watching this, there are people who are genuinely here to just make it happen. And uh, if you can't do anything, and uh, just just don't make it look bad. Don't come for anybody because you want to make it look bad. My sister has yeah. gone through all that because of people who just Kenyans here. And by them, you don't be shocked if those Kenyans they went through hell to just settle. Maybe they have that bitterness of I made it through hell, so why am I hosting? If you went through hell, then make it better for another person. Exactly. Because God blesses us to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. And what you went through, you can give somebody else a smile and say, if I went through that, then I'm not gonna let my brother go through it. I'm gonna be here to just be used to make it better because what I went through was bad. So they might be doing it because they had it so bad when they came in and they're like, let them do it. Because even me, I did it. But here we are just trying to say we've been blessed and we want to be a blessing. God yeah. blesses us to be we a blessing. We have like six rooms in the house. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. why do I'm like, Rumi lives in one? Like, you know, I'm not just like, if you start helping people, God will bless you. Amen. Yes, you exactly. Know? I'm like, before about... getting a house, maybe I've, I had like apartments already. I had like property for Airbnb, I know. But getting houses has been easier for me since I started hosting people. I'm like, something opened somewhere in the heavens or something. So sometimes yeah. you know somebody who's desperate and every time they go to bed they're like oh my god bless nafula she helped me do this you know that's, that's all you need to actually make a breakthrough people will be complaining about taxes i'm like what taxes taxes Leo? what taxes because you know what god has, has you everything you all figured out that 
you don't feel the pinch. But you if don't. you have little and you're just holding, you just in your pocket, it'll just stay with that little, right? Even the time, <laughs> even the time, I'll tell you, time, it doesn't mean that we weren't busy when we were in Africa, but time here is so precious. Mm -hmm. so you mm -hmm. even get try to get time even for your own family. And when you come in, we create time for you take you for grocery, do all that, pick you from the airport. Honey, that is more than everything. Yeah, that people is, charge for that. That is more than everything because we've people had charge for that. Like even yeah. to host you, they'll yeah. charge you for DS260, they'll charge you for their address, yeah. they'll charge you to pick up from the airport, they'll charge yeah. you to find your job, they'll charge you by the time you finish your like 2000 in before you even get settled in. If somebody yeah. is going out of their way and doing it, and the reason why I do it, I do it so that you can help other people. So if I have like now I'm I'm gonna be up to nine people. So if I have these nine people, if they host another nine people, how many people are here? And then those nine people now exactly. you know, eighteen you host more, eighteen people, then people won't have hosting. Hosting shouldn't be a problem. It we shouldn't be a problem. People in America like hosting should not. Nobody should be like okay I want a green card. I have money to process my visa, but I don't have a place to go. That shouldn't be an issue. It shouldn't. Be honest with you. It's I for pray. us to change the narrative, yeah. you know? Yes. And I pray that many people who are Kenyans or uh, whoever Africans living and watching this video, kindly open your homes. If you're already here and you feel it's in you, you'll be blessed. Not just your home. If you, you can even... Uh, you know, getting, I think getting an apartment, even if it's not your home, they will not... Even if you come here with, let me say, you have money to get an apartment approval for that apartment it's not easy if you're you a can, because they need to run your credit they especially have to know your, who you are they have to run your credit they have yeah. to learn run like your work history so you don't yeah. have any work sure. history you don't have any taxes that you filed so you yeah. don't have any credit so how yeah. are you going to get an apartment you can so you need somewhere for at least a year yeah until you can get your own comfortably get your own apartment yeah. So it doesn't matter if you have the money or not. There are people God is just putting here for the sake of just helping and just loving on you and making life easy for you. So if you embrace this, reach out. Mm -hmm. If you know it's going to be trouble, just stay away. Yep. Those are the if, you, if, you are, if you are out there, you want the DV lottery or whatever, do not. I have a, a website, nafulaconnect.com. You can go there and apply for hosting. Yes. And if we have a place, we'll host you like we won't let your visa expire because you don't have hosting mm -hmm. so we don't care i'm hosting like the person coming next day is from fiji i have another one from sri lanka i don't even know where that is you know? yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so i don't yeah. i don't discriminate like you have to be from kenya from africa, africa. you yeah. need hosting you don't have anybody to host you you have your visa we'll host you we'll find somebody to take you in Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's Amen. what I like because you see how how when it comes from the heart, you can hear how it just flows. Because mm -hmm. when when it's genuine, you will get it. When it's genuine and it's not created just for the sake, it's you will get it. If you know what I mean, I don't know how else to explain. Mm -hmm. And it's genuine. I stopped what I was doing as a business person to do this because somebody was genuine. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. get it. I was inspired by Nafula because she appeared to be genuine to me. We've not met physically. Yeah, but really, I can tell it's you. amazing that we haven't yeah. met and we, we just talk all the time like we've known each other for years. Yeah, and some people even yeah. had to be, when I posted on my Facebook, some people, Mindy, you want to do this? I've had so many stories about hosting. Yeah, and that's that. not, I, I know. Like, and you know, like even the people I'm hosting, to be honest with you, like when I do this, I know there'll be a bunch of outliers. Like there'll be people who are just going to act crazy, you know, because when you host people, I don't expect all these people to be good. You're going to get if people come with different personalities you get people who's pretending to be good because they want to be hosted you know yeah, so yeah. i understand that i'm, I'm not expecting that. like everybody i'm hosting is gonna be good and help other people but if yeah. i just get one person just one who's gonna host somebody else for me that is satisfaction i feel like i achieved my goal you know that's what we want like africans helping other african people yeah, because I'll give you an example. Somebody in Seattle just called me the other day. I've not told you that. He came here with 800,000 Kenyan shillings. I'm Kenyan. Nafula is Kenyan. So I don't know if you put it in dollars. That's like $7,000 US dollars, something like that. And they were hosted by a friend or a relative. They ended up, the relative ended up making them paying their own bills. 
until they went back to zero because i posted it into the iowa group and somebody had to just call me and tell me that god bless you my sister if you're doing that i landed in this country with eight hundred thousand kenya shillings and somebody used it for took advantage of it because they knew i had money and left me to the streets somebody a stranger had to come and pick me That's people have gone through hell so i don't know how else to put this out there but guys yeah, who needs hosting? If you need hosting, just apply. You know what's just gonna it. happen? What you know? Just just apply if you need hosting. Uh, especially if you're from Africa, like we'll take care of you because we wanna build back Africa. You can't build. We are very few here. We can't build like me and Millie. We can't build the whole village in Western Province. We need more people, right? Yeah. So if you don't host more people, we won't get more people here. So we are doing it so that our people back home will also benefit. I want and you to come here and go build a nice house. So when I have my house there there's yours that's also nice not just mine that looking good and everybody else around me is poor you know and help so that's what you want to do and they and should be a change. Gonna trickle down all the way to the villages yeah thank you again but uh your question go to go back to your question i'm in iowa burlington iowa mm -hmm. it's a city burlington is a city uh, like you see i don't know how to say we are in between we are at the border of illinois we are in the midwest the Midwest also is very cold. I've heard you saying New York is cold. The Midwest is also very cold because I'm three three hours drive from Chicago. So that is the easiest way to show you where I am. Three hours drive from Chicago, the Quad Cities or Kansas City is like four hours drive from where I am. Missouri, if you know Missouri, is like four and a half hours from here. So I'm giving you a picture of where I am. So okay. I'm in Iowa, but I'm surrounded with all this big city. I know Burlington, Iowa is not really famous, but I'm giving you a picture. So, but Chicago is well known, or if not Chicago, I can say Springfield, Illinois is like mm -hmm. an hour and a half drive from here. I know Springfield people know it. And you know, like wherever you are, if like yeah. even if you're in the bushes, I don't care. As long as somebody's <laughs> gonna land there, you get them yeah. a job, you get them yeah. up and moving. If they don't like the city or whatever, they'll just move you can somewhere really else. Relocate, yeah. You can relocate. US is a land of like once you have your permanent residence, you can move. Anywhere. Get your wings and fly. Yeah. We'll be happy to see you fly to a place you're comfortable. Exactly. I'll be happy. Yeah. Like when I see somebody driving a better car than I do, or living in a better house, and the, yeah. I hosted them. That's a proud moment, not a jealous exactly. moment. You know? exactly. It's so satisfying. So what yeah. I'm saying is the the location. That's what you asked. I'm in Iowa. Okay. Iowa. So By Iowa. Way. In case anybody uh, is interested in hosting, if you are a couple, then should be so much. You can reach out to me. You can apply through my website. I'll connect you to her and then we'll go from there. Thank you so much for being here. And we are open to singles too, but I just took couples because I realized you don't do that. Yeah, even singles, yeah. I know like uh, the DV lottery, like 2024, they've started just the interviews in uh, October. So as the days, I have more people I have to reach out. I've been busy, but I'll reach out to more people. So we'll have a lot of people to post. But then okay. if we get more people, these people that we are hosting, they'll have to move out get apartments quicker so that we can host other people. More so it's people. possible. So yeah. we can host a lot of people if we wanted to. We just have to do it the right way and the right yeah. mindset and from the heart, like you said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Anything you want to add on um, before we let you go? Let somebody has a question. It's just all about hosting, nothing else. That's why I'm here today. It's all about hosting because it's a God thing and God just dropped it in my heart to help. That's it. Okay. It's as simple as that. So if you're she's not a DV lottery winner, you know, a lot of people like I mean everybody's a DV lottery. She's not even a DV lottery winner, and she's yeah. like, you know what? I'm gonna host a DV lottery, DV lottery winners, you know, I'm which not. is really good. Yeah, you I know, came here through really... marriage, so I didn't understand even what Marshallin was doing. I had to go and and and, and, <laughs> and dig, and you're like, what is this lottery thing? But I'm yeah. so thankful that you know you decided to do this. And like I tell you, when I started, I didn't know what I was up to or whatever. But now that I have all these people around me, like I feel, I feel proud. I'm like, look at all these African people in New York. You know, like it's a proud moment. I'm like, you know, I have a bunch of immigrants in there, my sisters, my brothers, which is really nice. You'll have the same feeling. Wow. So you kind of creating a community already, huh? Yeah, it's already a community. I'm like, now I'm not like, you know, friends here, you need a okay, can you are you off on this day? Let's go out. Now I'm like Rumbi, let's go eat somewhere, you know. Let's go okay. out. And then wow. it just take her and then I'm out there, you know, and it's like my sister, we speak the same, the culture is the same and everything else. We're going over there, we're like, who's eating frog legs? You know, like we're, <laughs> we go to a restaurant, they're selling frog legs. I'm we like, do. Do this, you know, and we can relate. Mm -hmm. And we can relate. 
So thank you so much, guys, for being here. I'm going to bring uh, Rumbi. Thank you so much for being here, Rumbi. Your contribution, I know you've been in the background, but you've been here. Thank so you. thank you so much. Um, I'm just going to let you guys go. I'm going to see if there's any question here that's, you know, I can answer that I've not answered before, and then I'll call it a day. Oh, just to add on this, we have a YouTube channel, and that's the name appearing there for a channel. As she okay, said. yeah. So Millie and Chris, that's yeah. They can just Google that, right? No, like search it on YouTube, correct? Yeah, that's our YouTube channel. Just in case you wanna know who. And we I'm are. gonna put the link on this video, like on this live. I'll put a link at the bottom. If you've mm -hmm. not subscribed to this channel and you're watching me, seriously, good. Come on, <laughs> please subscribe to my channel. <laughs> and the other two, you please subscribe. So when you win the DV lottery, at least you know, like, okay, she'll she'll remind me that you know the results are out. That's that's the good thing. And make sure you turn the notification on, so you know when you are up, right? And, or when we're doing a live, at least you'll be notified. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for having us, Shalin. And Ruby, congratulations. I know I'll meet you one day. Yeah, you you'll meet. I'll, I'll bring you here one time. I'll bring everybody. We'll do a huge bash. Oh, yeah, that would be nice. Stuff, so we'll we'll get together sometime. Thank you, thank you guys so much. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Have a good one. Bye. Okay, you too. All right. So let me take a few questions. Let me see what questions you have, really quick. Uh, let me see. Oh, Millie can make a good preacher. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. She's she's uh, very religious, so that's that's a good thing. <laughs> Millie, you have a calling right there. Okay, let's see. Um, so Brania is asking, can you help find a host who can take a family? It's so hard because life in America is expensive. That's for one. So if I bring somebody like you know, a husband, wife, and you have three children, two children, that's that's a huge financial burden that I don't want to give somebody, you know. So you can just come as a couple, just come, work hard and bring your kids because you give birth to those kids by yourself. So you come work hard and bring them and take care of them. Don't have somebody else be responsible of taking care of your kids. If I find somebody who can host a family, then I can pair you up. But for the most part, come work hard and bring your family. All right, let's see what else. Uh... Any question here? Hmm. I don't see, like, most of these questions here, I think I've answered them. Let me see this one. So this one is asking, so the U.S. government does not provide accommodation and support to green card lottery winners? No. You know, when I was back in Africa a long time ago, like, I heard, like, if you win the green card, the U.S. will give you a house, give you a car, give you everything. Dude, if you win the green card lottery, you land here, you're on your own. You are on your own. If you don't have somebody to host you, you don't have food, you'll sleep hungry, and you'll be homeless and living under the bridge. So just make sure if you don't want to work hard for yourself, don't even bother about coming to the U.S. All right. So, no, the answer is no. You have to figure out. Uh, let's see. I think... Uh, And then uh, Daniel is asking, how long does it take for a green card holder to become a citizen? Five years. So it depends too. So if you win the green card lottery, five years, you become a citizen. But if a green card lottery comes, a winner comes here and marries an American citizen, I think they'll be eligible for citizenship after three years. You can double check on that because I'm not, I'm not an immigration lawyer, but I remember I helped somebody who adjusted their green card and became a citizen after three years because they were married to an American citizen. So either five or three, depending on your situation. Okay, so that's the... So this one is asking, how long does it take for you to finish driving school and get the license? So if you come and you know how to drive, it's very easy. You can get the license the same day. Somebody just needs to go drive you there and then they'll tell you parallel park or maybe drive so we can see how you drive and if you're good they just give you your license so some people it takes them a month some people who don't know they're not very good with driving it takes them a year and there's some people who it takes them a day so it just depends on how good you are driving all right so
Uh, so this one is asking, uh, what question did they ask Rumi during the interview? So we'll do a video with Rumi and then she's going to cover everything about like from the beginning, how she applied after she won, what did she need to do? Where did she go to the embassy for the medical? Where did she go to? So that anybody from Zimbabwe watching just Rumi's videos will be able to apply from start to finish. That's, that's what we are doing. Like that's what this channel is about. I'm hosting people. They can't tell you this information so that you don't have to look for it. Like you, you won the green card lottery, literally. Like you need all this information so that you can process it successfully. We don't want anybody losing, like, you know, a chance because you made a mistake. So I'll take care of that. Hopefully in the next week or two, we'll put a video and then she'll be talking about that. All right. Uh... Yeah, I'm getting a lot of questions about Rumbi. We'll do an interview with her and then she'll explain everything. I think I answered most of... Uh... And then here... So I think they want to know how many times Rumbi applied for the green card lottery. Rumbi did not apply once, twice, three or four times. It was more than that before she won. So when she come on the video, she's going to explain to you how many times she applied and when did she win. So that way, if somebody applied for one year and then two years you don't win and you start giving up, don't start giving up now. Like a, a guy that I paired to be hosted from Congo applied green card for 10 years. So he won on the 10th year. So when he, start, he started applying for the green card, the kids were little. So he, he was adding the kids to the application. All the kids outgrew the application. And then when they applied just him and the wife, they both won. And then they just came like last year. So after five years, they can bring the kids. So it worked out for them. But then you can apply like this thing. Sometimes if you're lucky, you get it. If you are not, you will be applying, applying until your time is right. When God says your time is right, that's what you, that's when you will win. So, and then I know like some people don't believe in God, but you know, I believe in God and that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, when your time comes, when the time is right, you'll just, you'll just win. Uh, so uh, this one is asking to complete the DS-260 uh, without a passport. They ask for a passport number, but then they ask for, like you can say, you can click a thing that says other travel document, I think. The last time I did for somebody, that's what we selected. There's other travel document, and then it won't let you like put the passport number and everything on your DS-260. If you have a problem, just send me an email, and then I can help you do that. All right, let's see. So uh, he's asking, if you win the DV lottery and uh, has been sentenced to court before for fighting with somebody, an assault case, uh, did time in jail. This is where the police clearance comes in. So if uh, the police clearance is like, okay, you did this, 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 and then for the assault or whatever, like, you know, they'll look at that, you know, so it will come up, especially if you're in jail and stuff like that, it might come up. So if you did something that's really, they feel like they, you can be a threat here, then you won't get uh, the visa. But then if they feel like whatever you did, you know, you're just young, 17 year old, maybe, you know, you just got into a fight and your police in your country you got police clearance, which clears you. Um, they might need to do like some background checks. So that's why, you know, some people apply, they'll be like, we submitted the DS-260 around the same time. And then we both have like close case numbers. And, you know, somebody got an interview and somebody did not. It just depends on that because sometimes somebody from, Iran or Pakistan or Afghanistan, if they win and their country has been known to have like terrorist stuff going on, the background check for those people is going to be longer than somebody who's from Kenya. So, for example, if you go to an embassy, both of you, you go for the interview and you put it on, you know, administrative processes. So, like, you know, you put an AP, you don't get uh, the visa right away. They tell you to wait because they have to double check something. Somebody from Kenya might go quicker because you don't, they're not looking at much. But if you're from Afghanistan, or maybe you are in the military, you're in the army, 
those stuff takes long to do a background check on. So that's why you can have the same case number, close case numbers, and somebody gets an interview or a visa before the other person, just because maybe you don't need a lot with your background check. So let's see. I think I am going all the way up. Let me see down here. Yeah, I think that's uh, pretty much it. And like I said, um, if you need a sponsor, like right now, we've given a lot of people sponsorship that we don't have much. But if somebody comes up who wants to sponsor an African, I'll still provide, uh, I will link you to so that you can talk about. I know there's a YouTuber who keeps talking. Like, literally, if you want that YouTuber to talk about Nafula, just go to the comment section and just type, how do I get I-134? Or what is I-134? The moment you mention that, it triggers something in the brain. That guy is obsessed with me. He talks about me like crazy. <laughs> he talks about, which is really good. It makes me feel better because out of all these YouTubers, somebody is taking time to talk about Nafula. So let nobody scare you about anything. If you need a sponsorship, if you go to the embassy and they need it, if you don't have it, you'll be denied a visa. So if you have one, it's better than having nothing because either way, what do you have to lose? So don't listen to that YouTuber. It's just jealous and stuff like that. Um, so if he talks about me, you can say I say hello. <laughs> I said hello to him. Um, but anyhow, with regardless of whether, whether he says on oh, a fuller giving sponsorship to African people who are strangers, we will still provide a bit of support. He can go over there, some cities south somewhere, because we'll still do it. So whether he talks about it or he doesn't. He goes to sleep at night thinking about Nafula providing sponsorship to all these African people and stuff. You know, he's not sleeping at night. So, but either way, we'll help African people whether he likes it or not. So if you need sponsorship and then you apply, if we have a sponsor, we will hook you up. And everybody that I've hooked up with a sponsor, they got a visa. So whatever he's saying that, you know, they'll be like, oh, this is a stranger. There's nothing like that. If you talk to somebody and they say that they talk to you, they know you are the best candidate, you talk about it, they want to sponsor you, they will sponsor you. And that's not a stranger because you're talking and they know you. They'll give you all the information about their life. They'll tell you where you'll be hosted and stuff like that. That's not a stranger. So let him not lie to African people and you go to the embassy without a, a sponsorship. You'll not get that visa. You'll not get it. And the visa will be reassigned to other locations like it'll be assigned to europe so if you don't get a visa that visa get reassigned to somewhere else if an african doesn't get it we don't want that we'll get our african people here whether he likes it or not if he can if he wants to bring all the uk as here too bad because african people win a lot of like a lot of them win the green card lottery we won't let just a simple avidavid of support or hosting make you not come to America. You'll make here. And then when you come to America, you do a video talking about the sponsorship you got from Nafula. Yeah. No, he, he would have, a, he'll have a lot of sleepless nights, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah. So anyhow, thank you so much for joining us today. I uh, will do a video with Rumbi later. So he'll tell you about the process. I'm very, very sorry. I apologize. I know there's a lot of people from Ghana who are asking me about the video because we were talking about uh, there's somebody from Ghana who was coming, who was going to do a video to tell you about this, the, the process, but then they're not willing to do that. They don't want to be on video, which we respect that. So we'll find another host from Ghana. I'll get you a host from Ghana, from all these countries. And when they come here, now I put it on my website. If you cannot share a story, Nafula will not host you in New York. I'll host you somewhere else, but I will not host you in New York. New York is for people who already we want to see the progress if we don't want to if you don't want to show the progress i don't think uh this is the best place for you because i'm not charging you to host you or anything so that's the least at least you can give and it's not helping me it's helping other people back in africa so thank you so much uh for watching today and uh i think that's it that's it uh I don't see any other questions, so I'm going to end the live, and it was nice talking to you. Thanks for tuning in, and please subscribe. Bye-bye.